Today I thought it might be interesting to look at USB power delivery. I've looked at Qualcomm Quick Charge in the past and found these testers on eBay and I quite like these and found that using this one in particular um, you could create a portable power pack that gave out 5, 9 or 12 volts using one of these adapters and a compatible power bank. So when I found this little module on eBay, I thought it might be worth a look. And as you can see, it's uh, labelled here USB PD trigger, a power delivery trigger. And on the left hand side, we've got a USB C connector and some unpopulated headers on the right. Yeah, so the module is fairly simple. We've got a USB C connector here, the voltage regulator. There's an LED up there at the top, a status LED, and a button down at the bottom, and in the middle, it's an ST microcontroller. But the first job here is to put some wires or some sort of connector here on the right-hand side, but um, I'm wondering which is positive, because that silk stream, well, it's kind of just in the middle of the two points, isn't it? Now I just need to work out the polarity, so I'll use this USB-C cable here and uh, my USB-C power bank and that will plug in there quite nicely and the LED is showing as red, fairly faintly, um, hopefully that's not a bad sign. And if I just bring my multimeter into shot then I can just check. Yep. Yeah first time so the uh, bottom port here is the positive five volts there on that output excellent and I'll just draw a positive and a negative crudely on there so I know which is which the latest standard for USB power delivery can provide up to 100 watts, but it's hard to believe that that can be done through a USB-C type connector. Qualcomm Quick Charge can only supply up to 36 watts. USB-C cables come rated at up to 3 amps or 5 amps. The USB-C connector is an interesting thing. Let's have a closer look here. And uh, I've set it up so we can just see all the pins there. And if you count them, well, there are 12. Now, what are those 12 pins used for? Well, two of them are for VCC and two of them are for ground. Now, looking at this, I would imagine the two on the right hand side there that are a little bit larger and two on the left hand side well those will be your VCC and your ground a bit thicker a bit heavier connections so that they can take that three or up to five amps two of the smaller pins are used for transmitting high speed data or video and two of them the same for receiving there's also a D plus and a D minus pin in there to be backwards compatible with older style USB. One is labelled as sideband but not actually used in the USB protocol. And then finally there's one pin which is the communication pin, a dedicated pin for the charger and the device to talk to one another. Now the communication pin allows for the device and the power source to negotiate a power profile and even which device is going to supply the power. USB power delivery allows for power to flow in both directions in compatible devices. So the power bank on the right that I'm connected to at the moment can both be charged and discharged through the same USB port. And it is really communication on that pin. It's not just a voltage setting like with Qualcomm. Actual information is passing between the two devices. Pretty neat. Now, I thought it might be interesting to use the uh, PD trigger to test a couple of devices. And first off is my power bank here, which is a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, um, which can provide on that type C port 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2 amps and 12 volts at 1.5 amps which of course if you do the maths well that's 15 watts, uh, 18 watts and another 18 watts here so clearly this power bank can only supply 18 watts nowhere near that 100 watts. Now I've dug out the ZK E-Tech EDB A05 Plus 
electronic load that I bought a year or so ago and I've connected that up to uh, a couple of wires now connected to the PD trigger and uh, hopefully well if I zoom in we should be able to see what's going on hopefully I have everything in shot here the power bank the PD trigger which is connected through to the load uh, which is showing that there's five volts here and of course this is a four wire measurement the current goes through these fatter wires and the voltage is measured at the source um, through these thinner wires so hopefully we'll get a reasonably accurate result here I'm going to set this meter it's in constant power mode it's going to pull 10 watts and drop out at one volt hopefully it won't need to drop out so uh, let's turn the load on so we can see we are getting what looks to be yeah 10 watts there 4.7 volts the voltage has dropped to but we're pulling over 2.1 amps now that voltage drop yeah, it could be over the uh, USB-C cable or within the actual PD trigger itself, but uh, I'm interested to find out what happens when I press this button. So it's now the LED has gone green and we're up to 9 volts. So we've got 9 volts and of course the power has dropped down to uh, just over 1 amp. Well, that's still within the uh, 10 watts that obviously... I've set here and if I press that button again well the uh, little LED there goes blue and we've gone into the 12 volt mode and again that current has dropped down to keep that continual power so uh, I wonder if I can set it a little bit higher so if I press stop and uh, press and hold the settings well let's try 18 watts is its absolute maximum isn't it so let's try 15 and press and hold set it's producing 12 volts exactly with no load and if i turn the load on there we go it drops to 11.8 volts but 1.267 amps so yeah 12 watts being pulled out of sorry 15 watts being pulled out of my power bank and in fact that power bank if we can see that has a little green light on it so it clearly is showing that we're at a higher voltage isn't it i hadn't noticed that before if i press this and take it down to five volts that green led goes off and it didn't like that let's turn it to green yeah when it's on non-standard voltage i didn't know that about this power bank there's a little green led but yeah that seems to work okay well i've got to try it 18 watts haven't i so i've set it to 18 watts press and hold to save it press the on button and yes it is providing well it's dropped a little bit 11.77 volts at 1.5 amps excellent that power bank well it's living up to its claims and that's all thanks to this little pd trigger which has moved my blue tax come unstuck now when i was looking around amazon looking at equipment to test this caught my eye it's a rav power uh, in-car adapter with just one usb c connector on it and an iSmart usb standard a type uh, adapter here and it's fairly small and fairly nice i guess but look at these stats it's amazing the usb a output well that does five volts at 2.4 amps that's 12 watts isn't it that's pretty standard these days but the usb c output can do three amps at five volts three amps at nine volts but three amps at 15 volts that's 45 watts that's huge and 20 volts 2.25 amps well that's still 45 watts isn't it yeah i think it is wow 57 watts maximum out of this uh tiny comparably for 57 watts in car adapter across the two ports that's crazy numbers i thought 
Now the RAV power in-car adapter set to 5 volts. We can see with the red LED and the 5 volts on the screen here. Had some impressive stats. It reckoned it could produce 3 amps at 5 volts. Let's uh, give that a go by turning on the load. And ooh, clearly it's struggling there. Um, the PD trigger went a bit crazy and it obviously went into protection mode. So let's try another. Let's just drop the watts down a bit. 13. We'll give that a go. Set that. Turn it on. Yeah, it's struggling a little bit. I am seeing a voltage drop here. We've got 4.46 volts on the output, but it is uh, providing 2.91 amps. So, yeah, it's almost there. Perhaps it's my testing equipment that's causing the problem. Let's see if it's any better at 9 volts. So we've upped the voltage, 8.6 volts, 1.5 amps now it did claim on the unit itself at nine volts it can do up to three amps so what's that that's 18 27 watts that's quite a high figure shall we give it a go let's uh go into settings here and change that to should we just try 23 to start with i don't want to melt anything do i 23 watts is still quite a lot of power so we'll turn it on and yeah, 8.44 volts, 2.7 amps. That's, well, that's quite a lot of power, isn't it, still? Yeah. Oh, what the hell, we'll try the 27 watts at 9 volts. Whoa, yeah, there you go. 8.3 volts, it is dropping somewhat. 3.2 amps, is anything getting warm? You'd hope not. Well, this might be, I guess. But yeah, that is roughly 27 watts, as was shown here. 27 watts, 8.34 uh, volts, 3.235 amps. So the RAV power is talking some impressive numbers. 15 volts, 3 amps. Well, it's still here at the 12 volt mode, but I'm setting it to 40 watts. 15 volts at 3 amps is 45 watts, so... Can it manage, uh, manage 40 watts? We shall see. Oh no, that's protecting itself, isn't it? And dropping the voltage. And eventually it's given up after a bit of craziness on the LED. And actually, a slight beep. 10% lower, 36 watts. Will it run... Oh, yes, just about 11.3 volts, give or take 3.18 amps. It is doing it. I suspect my connections are probably not the best for this test. But, yeah, it's getting somewhere close to its uh, rated output, isn't it? Now, interestingly, the RAV power does say it does higher voltages than my power bank. So what happens if I press the button again? Oh, well, now we've gone into a yellow mode. And as you can see on the load here, we've got 15 volts. So my lead acid battery that this is connected to is now being boosted up to 15 volts. Can we try that same 36 watts? Yep, two and a half amps at 14.36 volts. That's pretty impressive. I wonder while this is running, whether I can actually press it again. Oh, we've got a mixture of the blue and the red LED, and we have gone up to 20 volts, 1.8 amps, 36 watts. So, yeah, this is boosting the power of my pretty old and had it lead acid battery in the background. And um, what did it say? 20 volts, it can produce two and a quarter amps. So, yeah, we're getting close to the rating, aren't we? So one final go at the 20 volt level here. Can it produce 45 watts? So what's that? 2.25 amps at 20 volts. Let's give it a go. Wow, yes, the voltage has dropped a little bit. 19.27 volts, but it is producing 
45 watts, 2.3 amps at 20 volts. And what's more amazing, I think, is that my battery, my little lead acid battery, is managing to produce that power. It's uh, seen some life, that battery. Well, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this little power delivery trigger, and I've enjoyed playing with it and learning all about USB power delivery. I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, USB-C connector as well, because all that power, 45 watts going through that little connector, and of course my cable, which is uh, of decent quality, but yeah, 45 watts through that little cable. My power bank and my new in-car adapter seem to uh, pretty much live up to their stats because, you know, there are some losses in all the connections that I had. And, of course, that meter might not be reading perfectly accurately. So, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. 45 watts out of this little in-car adapter. It's got some impressive stats, this thing. And, uh, yeah... I can definitely recommend that. But yeah, this video is all about this. And I, like I said, I've enjoyed playing with it. Not only does it do uh, 5, 9 and 12 volts, as we found out there, it will also do 15 and 20 volts as well. So this is a really useful little module. And when you can pull 45 watts through it, well, that's a useful portable power supply, isn't it? Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.